Welcome to Kansas Monks TV, the special banquet edition. We honor Abbot Barnabas Seneca in this two-part episode. Preparations for the banquet went up to the last minute. Let us check in on our co-chairs and see what they're up to. I knew that we were going to sponsor the dinner, but I had no idea we had to make the dinner for the Abbot. I've been feeding him for 20 years, and here I am feeding him again. He has been a load for all these years. Uh, just think of his poor brothers and fellow monks. I don't know how they did it. They're saints. Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh, this is all over the floor. Hey, you know what? No problem. We'll go ahead and just give this to the abbot. He'll never know the difference. No, here. Here's a fresh one. Give this one to Barnabas. Gosh, the dinner is for him. Give it to Abbot James. He'll never know the difference. Next. Okay. All right. 400 more. I think we're in serious trouble. and We're going to need someone that can go ahead and help us with the loaves and the fishes miracle. On behalf of the monks of St. Benedict's Abbey and the Society of St. Benedict, we'd like to welcome you to a very special event. We'll pay tribute to a man who has touched our lives as a priest teacher, artist, and friend. A man who has served us in so many ways. Abbot Barnabas is not only a fine priest, he is a wonderful, compassionate, kind person. As we celebrate the abbot's life and ministry, we hope this evening's festivities will reflect his personality. Whether he is taking photos or blessing people with a song, Abbot Barnabas truly is one of a kind. Why did the abbot retire anyway? I need to talk to you about Brother Emmanuel. I was making peanut brittle with Brother Levin. We ran out of peanuts. Brother Levin is supposed to make sure we have enough peanuts. And I told Brother Emmanuel to make sure we had enough peanuts. But Brother Levin didn't do his job. Brother Emmanuel didn't do his job. Unbelievable. We won't have enough brittle to fill the orders for Christmas. We're not going to make our goal for the year. And you're probably going to have a lot of upset customers. It's, it's his, his fault. fault. He, he can't, can't be, be trusted, trusted with, with anything. anything. Abba yeah, Barnabas, could you spare me a minute? It's just terrible this way that all these things are piling up. I know you're busy, but this thing is really important. You're going out to the board of directors meeting, but I've got to talk to you about something. That, well, that's important, yes. You say you have to go to the Emporia confirmations right afterwards, but I've got to talk to you right now. I'm sure you'll get there if you drive fast. That lamp right above me in the, in the chapel, it buzzes, it buzzes all the time. I can't stand it. It just buzz, buzz, buzz. Won't you please come in and look at that thing with me now and, and hear it? It'll only take you a second. Hey, Father Abbott, I've got to talk to you. I blew up the lawnmower. Is it possible to get the pipe organ replaced? I'm afraid to admit that I flunked Theology 101. I didn't understand your poem. Is, is it finished? I slept in morning prayer again. Sorry. Sure wasn't like this when I was abbot. A lot of people refer to Abbot Barnabas as the singing abbot, but he really is much more than that. He, uh, he's truly a renaissance man, incredible photographer, of course wonderful singer, and he was the abbot during the greatest growth period in the history of the college. I've always felt a closeness to Abbot Barnabas and the leadership that he provided. The yeah, abbot was just always so much fun to be around, such a positive guy, and just always seemed to go ahead and uh, have the right things to say. Just a very gregarious guy, puts you at ease. Um, you know, he's the type of person when you first meet him, uh, you feel like you've known him your whole life. You can so clearly see how much he loves his people and cares about his people and loves God. The abbot was so joy-filled and peaceful. He drew everyone into Mass. When he started singing, man, everybody perked up. God gave him that gift to grab everybody with his voice. He was always kind of a calming influence when we went through discussions, intuitive, analytical, but very, very supportive. I've always been very, very impressed with Abbot Barnabas. He's a great ambassador for not only the Abbey, but also the college. I just think he's a very unique person. He's, he made an enormous impact in our family. After we'd had three children, 12 years later, we decided we wanted to adopt, and I had been turned down by agency after agency, and I went and talked to him about it because I just knew there was a baby out there somewhere. I just couldn't find her. And within two weeks, he called me. He had the name of an agency and a family to call. 
And so uh, within a year, our daughter Molly was home. And she would have never been here had it not been father, for Father Barnabas. Molly's now 18 years old, and for her whole life, she's had a close relationship with the abbot. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here right now. So that's kind of crazy to think, but it's just amazing. has always been a warm, welcoming kind of person. Ordinary be people become extraordinary by how they develop the talents God's given them. His ability to make you feel that there is true love, it's not phony, I would call it infectious. He's able to reach across to everybody. He likes to laugh. He's very witty. He likes to have a good time. Certainly very devoted, devoted to God and to what he does as the abbot of St. Benedict's. And I think he is absolutely respected by all of those around him. During his time as, as abbot, you've not only seen the college grow and prosper through his leadership, the abbey has also accomplished a great deal. Barnabas will be admired and treasured. It'll be called really the Renaissance for St. Benedict's Abbeys as well as Benedictine College. My first thought on uh, Father Barnabas was his uh, kindness towards people. He really cares. When we lost our son 12 years ago, Father Barnabas was there within 12 hours in Houston, Texas. And his being there gave me such a feeling of caring and understanding. I remember him speaking speaking, and it was, it was heartwarming and felt like the entire Abbey was being represented there through Abbot Barnabas. My uh, granddaughter, daughter, and uh, family were on the mall, and he said to Angela, well, she seems to be uncomfortable. She said, well, that's her, that's her first pair of shoes. He took a picture of her. He gave a, a homily in reference to the shoes and wrote a poem, and uh, we were so, so impressed with that. I, mean, I just want to say congratulations. You have been a great friend. We love you dearly. You have done a fabulous job, improved so many people's lives. We appreciate all you've done. It has been a pleasure to work with you. I just want to thank you for all you've done for the community. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks. It's a joy to be with you on this occasion, and congratulations, Abbot Barnabas. Uh, you know, when the abbot was telling me about retiring, and I uh, thought, well, he's going to have some time on his hands now, and I said, Abbot, maybe you could give me voice lessons. Uh, you sing so beautifully, and I said, it's either that or maybe help us out at St. Mary's in uh, Kansas. So he said, I'll take St. Mary's, Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, the abbot's an extraordinary leader, and... Um, I'd just like to focus on a few th qualities that, that I greatly admire in him. First is his generosity. I'm always amazed at how many places Abbot Barnabas has been. And uh, whether it's visiting somebody in the hospital or going to a wake for a funeral, serving on boards and committees, uh, he's ubiquitous. He's everywhere. The second quality, besides generosity, is, is uh, beauty. Uh, the abbot has a great appreciation for the arts. Uh, we know his singing talent, but also his photography, which he was generous enough. He, we've had some of that art displayed at Savior Pastoral Center. And uh, he really celebrates the beauty of God in many, many different ways and draws others. But most of all, the greatest quality that I admire in Abbot Barnabas is his leadership. Um, he's got some extraordinary human leadership skills. Uh, his personality is one that draws people to him, to him. And he's someone that I think all of us just enjoy being around. He's calm and wise, exudes a sense of serenity even when dealing with some difficult and vexing problems as we heard with uh, the monks. 
And to use an analogy from athletics, he's the guy that you want to have the ball in his hands for the critical play. Um, Abbott Barnabas inspires confidence in those around him, and that's why I think his brother monks chose him to be their, their leader and spiritual father. He's a humble servant. Being the abbot, the leader of a monastery, has never been about himself, about him receiving recognition or attention. It's always been about serving others, about caring for others, about imitating Jesus' example of what it means to be a leader. He literally and figuratively, I think, washes the feet of those that he's called to lead. So Abbot Barnabas, we salute you and we give thanks uh, for your great leadership and what a blessing it's been to the Abbey but to all the Archdiocese. So thank you very much. A special thank you to Archbishop Joseph Nauman for joining us that evening. There were several suggestions on where we should host the banquet. Parishioners of Holy Spirit Parish had their own ideas. Sometimes you want to go where it Well, it's about time you got here. Hi, Abbot Barnabas. Hi, Abbot. Hey, Abbot. Abbot, you the man. You're the Abbot. You the man. You're the Abbot. <laughs> The singing abbot, that's what I remember about the abbot must. Came to Holy Spirit back in 1990 and what I admired most about him was his, uh, his short homilies. When you're with the man, he's always at peace and he's always glad to see you and he's always interested in you. I've always really, really appreciated those days because those are days that God knew you needed just a little time away and there the abbot always was. He was a true servant leader. He just led in a way that made us all want to be like him and to serve others the way he was serving us and so really was close to our hearts. He brought church to become alive for the children. It was fabulous. He loved mass and got the children to love it as well and just brought Christ into their lives. He's just a super person and you're so comfortable when you meet him or get to know him. He, he's family. My family, my boys and my wife, have been so fortunate to attend Vespers with the abbot and the rest of the monks. And to hear him sing the Vespers is one of the most beautiful prayers we've ever heard. He confirmed our three kids there at Holy Spirit and it was his singing and he just talks from his heart. He's just so warm and he greets you as if you're the only one in the room. He gives you a hug. It just makes you feel very welcome. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. You've always been the best, and you're just a, a great person. And we appreciate it. Proud to be your friend. Don't let me out of here before I start crying. Watch out for part two of this Kansas Monk special. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm Brother Christopher, and this is my dummy, Father Bertrand. Say something, Father Bertrand. Hi. He doesn't feed me very well. <laughs> Close my eyes until you want me to speak. <laughs> Messed that one up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> With the elbow pads, which are quite fashionable. Brother Fastidious here with Brother <laughs> yeah. Love. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got. <laughs>